guys, thank you for joining me tonight. And again, you're sh- welcome to my channel. Ang interview natin ngayon is none other than Rick Olivares. So, sino ba si Rick Olivares? Siguro familiar sa inyo yung name niya. He's actually a media guy. And for some background, he went to Ateneo de Manila from prep to college and wrote for the school papers. Pero in his mind, what he really wanted to be was become a rock star. Pero guys, after that, nine books na yung na-publish niya. Since then, sold out na itong mga to. And is currently working on a 10th and 11th book concurrently while doing media jobs and of course, teaching. So if you guys want to learn about writing, uh, completing a book, publishing, then visit his webpage and Facebook page and give him a follow. Tapos makikita nyo na doon and contact him para in case meron siyang mga succeeding classes, you can join in. Ito, magandang usapan to. Let's all welcome Mr. Rick Olivares. Good morning everyone. I'm very happy to have here Rick Olivares. So Sir Rick, as I introduced to you earlier, he's into full-time writing now. And how did he get there? Rick, can you share with us some information about yourself? Hi Jane, Happy New Year. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor from a fellow author and uh, I'm happy you're doing this. No? Interestingly, I never thought I'd be a writer. And when I went to school in Ateneo de Manila from prep to college, I wanted to become either a musician, a full-time musician, a teacher, or I wanted to join military service in the U.S. because my family has a military heritage. I mm-hmm. got to do the first two, yung pagiging sundalo. I nearly did that back in 2001. After 9-11, I signed up. <laughs> But I was a little bit too old to go to... Uh, to join the U.S. Marines, I, I was told that if I wanted, I could join the U.S. Army. And uh, I okay. specifically asked to be sent to Afghanistan or Iraq. <laughs> wow! <laughs> walang walang tahot, eh, no? Sira, sira ulo. But interestingly, uh, writing was never there. I, in fact, as a kid, I drew. I drew, I painted. That was where I was good at. No? Writing was just far-fetched. And I was an athlete in school. No? But, you know, uh, writing my first ever published work was because of my classmate when I was in grade six for the Ateneo grade school newspaper. And he, I, I didn't write a word. He wrote everything. He just said, since you're my best friend, I want you to be co-writer. And I was embarrassed. No? But it was still <laughs> technically a first, my first published work. No? But then when I got to high school, I was writing for the Ateneo school, high, high school newspaper. Siguro my family kasi, a lot of uh, my aunts, my uncles, my cousins were in media. My aunt co-owned Times Journal, the newspaper. Uh, two aunts wrote for the Inquirer. And one okay. of them was a newscaster on Channel 9. And uh-huh. um, my cousins were writing for magazines. And so it, it was in the family, but... I never thought that it would, I would follow in, the, in their footsteps. It's just sort of like a default thing to go into media. I think it, so you know, I, I, my career eventually this in advertising and marketing. And before I go back into mm-hmm. writing, I was, I think advertising was a huge help in terms of changing my writing. Okay. Uh, and then marketing refined that. That sounds weird, but it's all connected. Uh, now, back in school, I think in Ateneo, uh, they uh, cultivate that no, uh, mm-hmm. that writing habit. I remember in high school, we were asked to put up a newspaper. Uh, our class, I think in second year high school, our class was divided into different media bureaus and we had to put out a newspaper, come in balas a content. So that was the first time I was exposed to that, no? And then mm-hmm. I recall in fourth year, we were exposed to fiction writing and uh, we had to choose a novel, a well-known novel, where we had to write a sequel. And okay. I wrote a sequel to Catch Her in the Rye. You know, oh, so wow. That was, yes, that's, that's tough. Right? That's really tough. But uh-huh. we had to choose something. Uh, it, not naman a whole novel, no, but uh, mm-hmm. we had to write at least one chapter no, and at the most okay. three. Okay. So you could see the progression of the writing. And mm-hmm. I ended up writing about five chapters of it. And uh, so that, I think that was the first inkling that I could write because when I got to college, um, I was put in the honor section for 
uh, writing in English literature. And I thought I was a terrible writer. In high school, I was getting A's, A's in my essays. When I got to college, I was getting D's and F's. The highest <laughs> I ever got in the honor section was a C, C minus. And I was so disgruntled. But I didn't realize because my teacher was, our professor was just deconstructing not just my style, but all of us. No? Because I was uh -huh. coming into, from grade school to high school, I, I was heavily influenced by Tolkien, Robert Frost, mm -hmm. Frank Herbert, the big authors of that time. Uh, I discovered Lord of the Rings when in graduation from grade seven to going to high school that was 1981 and um, my mom borrowed a dvd and lord of the rings the animated film by ralph bakshi and that fascinated me so that led me to buy my first ever books which was the lord of the rings trilogy mm. and I, I can even tell you how much they cost i remember how much <laughs> they cost because they were my first books you remember your first ones yeah and i it fascinated me. But you know, going to college, it was deconstructing my style. And uh, I was kind of verbose, wordy. And college was different because we were using Strunk and White, which is the style that is espoused by the New York Times, the New Yorker, the Economist. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like a crap writer. I think I finished college thinking, I would, no, I'm not going to be a writer. No, no, no way. Uh, but somehow, third year of college, I was. I, I started doing a, a summer job during third year, no? writing for my aunt who owned time, co owned Times Journal with Bejo Romualdez. And uh, mm -hmm. so that was the first getting published work. And, mm -hmm. you know, although parang intern slash, you know, summer job, wala ka ng sweldo, but senior mm -hmm. byline in a newspaper something yeah was something and then uh from there i moved to the inquirer third year college lang ako. third year okay i started writing for the philippine daily inquirer doing feature stories Ayan na. so tuloy -tuloy yan, that even uh until school was done i was mm -hmm. already in advertising i was still writing for the inquirer writing mm -hmm. about comic book artists okay uh, chefs Young entrepreneurs. I was profiling ambassadors. Uh, I was ghostwriting stuff for. I won't say na huna kaya. Eh. <laughs> ghostwriting stuff for some well-known people right. on on food. But you know, I it, that if you ask me, Jane, that was mm -hmm. tough because what do I know about food? All I know is I could eat them. Mm -hmm. I could not certainly do a proper food review, mm -hmm. and. Uh, that helped me in advertising because in advertising you have to be very very good at a lot of things, and so you can see the tally, no, no, leading uh -oh. one one to another, and that's that's something that I teach. I'll get to that later, no. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that writing, doing lifestyle and entertainment and features writing for the Inquirer prepared me for advertising, because. Although my editors then, uh, Lita Logarta and Thelma San Juan, later mm -hmm. was an editor for ABS-CBN Publications, I thought mm -hmm. under Miss Lita and uh, Miss Thelma, they pretty much allowed me naman to, sige, kung bahala, just write what you want. We'll mm -hmm. tell you if it's good for publication or not. No? Siguro it helped that my two aunts were columnists, major columnists mm -hmm. for the Inquirer, mm -hmm. the political columnists. No? Um but I never had an article rejected. Not one. Not one. Mm -hmm. And that was that was something for my it that did that boosted my confidence. No? And then yeah. but you know, uh, feature writing is that's nonfiction. You know? You're writing about real people, real events, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Advertising's different. Advertising refined my writing. That okay. if I if my writing style was refined in college by Strunk and White as a, with a, as a Bible, and I still have my textbook, uh, advertising refined it even further because in advertising, less is more. Believe it or not, you less is more. You write with fewer words but more impactful words, mm -hmm. and that's a different discipline. And uh, 
and you have to the, the, we had a we had this contest one time no? where uh, the writers were on one side and the art directors on the other mm-hmm. and uh, we had to write the we had it was about writing a radio commercial no? you think that you would think the writers had an advantage over the art directors because we deal with words no mm-hmm. they actually beat all the writers <laughs> because they they think visually eh? and that for that was a huge turning point for me in terms of writing because I began to understand visual writing, which is how I write to this mm-hmm. day. And it forms the crux of what I teach. You know? Visual write, visual thinking, visual writing. Right? But at the same time, less is more. Right? So mm-hmm. fewer words, not, not lo- long, long-winded sentences, nothing like that. No? Um, there's a beauty in simplicity. Some people like to use big words. Eh? Well, good trip mo yon. Sige. Who am I to tell you not to write that way? But people don't speak that way. So that's not going to resonate except with the highbrow crowd. I'm not saying that's wrong. If that's mm-hmm. your avenue, then go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if you want to reach a wider audience, then that's not it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, it, but I didn't under fully grasp everything at the time, Jane. That was, mm-hmm. took a while. But I noticed that it changed my writing because my, my commercials were resonating well with audiences. My print ads were doing well. And we were winning accounts. Uh, we were winning awards and stuff. So mm-hmm. that was great. That was great. But, and the cool thing about that, it's not, it, that's, that's fiction. That's fiction. You have to con- conjure, right. come up with ideas for commercials that are, so that, that creativity tweaked a lot of the way I thought, the way I wrote. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But again, I didn't fully grasp that until later on. Even when I moved out of advertising to the client side, some marketing, I found that whatever I learned there helped me mm-hmm. in my marketing job because it, it's a different discipline. But it, again, it fine-tuned no? in marketing. You have to sell a product to a yeah. certain a certain target market. A a certain segment. So, what do you tell them? That's like writing. What do you tell them? Diba? Again, diba? hindi ko napagtagpi-tagpian until I moved to Hong Kong. Diba? Uh, right, working in Hong Kong. I, I, then I realized, like, it's like writing. What do, you tell, what do you tell them to grasp their attention that will make them want to buy your product? And you were telling stories with your advertising, with your marketing materials. And that was fascinating. Mm. Again, I did not grasp everything. You know, you understand, you understand, siguro yung maturity level mo, your understanding mm-hmm. of the world, the way it works. Mm-hmm. It, it happened, it was a slow burn. But, uh, I think moving to the US was another thing. You know, then mm-hmm. Now I start writing. Even if I'm working, even if I have a day job in a marketing company, uh, even if I'm waiting on tables and stuff like that, I'm writing mm-hmm. letters to my friends, my family, my barcada, my parents, telling stories about my life in the U.S. And it wasn't just dear mom, dear dad. It's not just that. It's writing stories. And don't, don't coalesce everything. Uh, mm-hmm. Everything that I had learned since grade school nag, then I I can't say it's a moment of clarity there are different moments of clarity but I didn't know because those emails are being circulated and uh, it was just supposed to be for my lola my mom, my dad, my bakada my sister, my kids and I didn't know people were sharing it because you're saying you have to read this mm-hmm. it's fascinating, it's a grasp into a life of an immigrant, uh, someone who was up there, then is suddenly down there because it's in the recession. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it was being spread. And one day, someone from the Inquirer said, "Hey, can we reprint this in the pages of the Inquirer?" Parang young blood, yung column ng young blood or old blood. And I said, "How how did you get that? How did you get a hold of that? That's that's your private stuff." And oh, we got it from your aunt. Like, what? Seriously? <laughs> and then they said it resonated well with people. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. 
and then like to publish it. And I said, no, that's too intensely personal. You cannot. You cannot. Mm-hmm. But uh, so they didn't demand no. But okay. Okay. I realized that the stories had a life of its own. And um, mm-hmm. eventually people say you should compile it into mm-hmm. a book. Again, I never thought of myself as a writer, Jane. Never. Hindi pa rin. Hindi pa rin. Iba kasi iba yung iba pa rin yung track. Track ko. It's marketing and advertising. That's the one that I was focusing on. But I was doing a lot of creative work. I mean, like doing documentaries and stuff, writing them, directing them, commercials. Nagawa ko na. So, mm-hmm. while my friends and colleagues thought that He's a creative person. Never, but some would say writer, but I never thought of that until. <laughs> siguro by the time I actually accepted that term, mm-hmm. it would probably be around 2008. Before okay. that, no, I rejected it. I said, no, I'm uh-huh. not. Hindi sa kinahihiyan ko. Of course not. You're proud of it, but hindi, I'm not there. Eh. Yeah, but you're getting published. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'm not. It's not a false modesty. It's just that I didn't think I was. Mm-hmm. I never. So, what made you realize that you were, you are? And people started asking me to write this, write that, do this, do that. Okay. Or people, when people started uh, commenting, or whether they would offer praise or criticism, mm-hmm. uh, then. You know, the cool thing is, in the U.S., I met this guy who became sort of a mentor. And he mm-hmm. said, you know, you should go into blogging. And I said, what's mm-hmm. a blog? And he explained it to me. So I can honestly say I was probably the first blogger in the country back in 06. Wala uh, nagbablog. Mm-hmm. And at the time, it was seen as a dirty word. You know, parang wannabe writers. That's why you see that but I didn't want, like, you know, parang, there was a negative connotation to be a blogger. But mm-hmm. people were, re- it, let's be very clear. No? There were, I had a blog for sports, a blog mm-hmm. for comic books, and a blog for music. Iba iba. So, tatlong blog yan na pinupuno ko ng laman, araw araw ginawa ng Diyos. And then people were reading it. Uh, chefs were reading it. Uh, mm-hmm. Ordinary people loving who love sports were reading it. People who love music and travel were reading it. And then, oh, so it led to writing gigs uh, mm-hmm. for different publications, uh, whether, mm-hmm. for example, Maxim, FHM, mm-hmm. Philippines Free Press, uh, mm-hmm. some architectural magazines. Believe it or not, diba? Pati yun. It's, it was. It's amazing, and but around that same time, I was also given a newspaper column. So, you know, I think then before I knew it, I was doing books, writing books. Mm-hmm. And I never, in a million years, that I think I'd write one, let alone <laughs> nine. Yeah, <laughs> and now uh, nine books published, right? Nine books published. And, um, actually, I was about I to some, ask. I have some. You have it there? Okay, can can you show me? I was able I was able uh this was okay, this is a heart coffee table book. Wow. Uh, 11, 11 days in August. Uh this is about our national basketball team, Gilas Filipinas. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. sold around five thousand copies. Wow, uh, five thousand. Yeah, I think minimum. Uh, mm-hmm. about 2,000 hardbound coffee table, mm-hmm. then another 3,000 plus soft cover versions. No? And um, I, this is actually my second. No? The first one was for about the Ateneo Blue Eagles. So I was doing a lot of sports writing, a lot of it. Yeah. In fact, most of my books are, almost all my books are sports. Okay. Uh, but okay. I've, I've ventured now into music writing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm right. I should. I guess I can announce it. I'm writing the biography of Raymond Marasigan of the Eraser Heads. Ah, okay, okay. Yes, and uh, I'm doing another music book that I cannot talk about more. Na, <laughs> uh, but it's, right. it's something, no? And then I. But before we move, uh, I'd like to check with you because this 11 days in August, I'm sure that 
the demand for it was immediate. Um, so that means that uh, did you have to write it immediately over a month, two months? How long did it take you to finish that? that, that I'm glad you asked. That is a cert that certainly is a very interesting story. So I had written my first two books already about the Ateneo basketball team. Two. Okay. And um, so with that under my belt, and both had sold very, very well. Um, mm -hmm. At the time, we were looking for a new project. What what could we do? What could I what could I write? No. So, it, um, I approached the head coach of the national team then, Chot Reyes, along with a mm -hmm. friend of mine who was going to be the book manager. He's a noted photographer by the name of Philip Season. He said, "Hey, what if you write about Gilas?" And he said, "Sure, but what if we lose? If no one <laughs> wants to read about the loser?" And I said, "It's you know, there's so many books about people who don't." achieve their dreams it's a, the journey that's interesting it's what they learn but he said yeah but it's going to be hard to fund a book like that so ginawa namin ni philip sugal kami so we started writing produce preparing for it kahit wala pang go signal walang approval okay. because the one thing i learned is that when you cover something as a journalist when you cover something you be sure you have material on hand if you're mm -hmm. going to write it retroactively, it's difficult because you will forget mm -hmm. details. Diba? Yes. So yeah. we were working on it as everything was unfolding. When the mm -hmm. Philippines beat Korea in the 2013 FIBA Asia Championships in Manila, that sent us to Spain in the World Cup the next year. That's when, during right before the press conference, after that massive win, mm -hmm. probably 60 people in, in the press room, with an international mm. press, at least 60 people, um, Chot Reyes said, it's a go. So there, I had the advantage of, or, of mm. doing it concurrently at the same time. So it was done kind of quick, you know, and it yeah. sold very well. You know? So that opened more doors because later on I was working, doing stuff for other people. Mm -hmm. But uh, that also gave me the courage now that I had published something. It gave me the wherewithal to do independent comic books. You know? These are my independent comics. It's titled Ang Ilog. Uh, it's a five part series. It's drawn in the classic Filipino style of the 1950s and 60s. You know? my, my artist uh, is a drew, drew during those years. You know? So, ayan, no? para makita nyo. And it's written in both English and Filipino. There are two versions. Oh, so, okay. So, I had to learn how to... I'm ashamed of admitting I don't have very good <laughs> Filipino. So, I'm sure the Filipino is crap. <laughs> I'm putting myself on the spot. But there's no Google uh, Translate. <laughs> oh, oh, then eventually, you know, I, it, it did very well. Uh, without... Super promotion. You'll find this in the mm -hmm. Comic Con. Yung Comic Con, no? Naka, I okay. sold 1,500 copies. 1,500. Wow. Oh. And then I started doing this one. I have to do, it's not yet finished. I've finished the first three parts. There are two more. The fourth oh. is done. We just need to put it together, not to, to lay them out. But I promised mm -hmm. myself this 2023, everything will be done. Then mm -hmm. I did this one. Um, this is my homage to Peter Pan, East of the Sun, West okay. of the Moon. Uh, my artist is a Filipino based in Australia, and mm -hmm. we, it's written in both English and French because the setting is in Paris. It's my homage uh, to Peter Pan. Okay. It did well. Recently, well, it small. Really no, no, not is yet. It? Not yet. Okay. I, took a, I had this, I've been on this extended hiatus from self publishing comic books. Because of work. Work has been really heavy. Here's another one. It's called K-Town. Mm -hmm. uh, this is about Koreans living in Poblacion, Makati. So it's like Scooby-Doo. It's a mix of Scooby-Doo and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So mm -hmm. it's Koreans living in the Philippines. It's a different point of view. So you have to learn how... So I was talking to my Korean friends. How do you think? How would you say this? How would you... You know, what would you mm -hmm. do? Diba? So the, 
ayun na yung the creative fiction part of it, diba? that you, you pick up along the way. Diba? And that the, this is the last one that I did. It's a graphic novel called Pader. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, it's, it's done graffiti style. The artwork is in graffiti style. Diba? Okay. Uh, it's something that was written in the US, but I had to, moving back here, you had to change the scenario, the scenes, and everything, the thinking, the Filipino. So it's written in Filipino. This one's entirely in Filipino. So I think I got my Tagalog down pat over here. <laughs> <laughs> so, ayan, That's no? so um, nice. Parang na-experience mo both, no? traditional publishing and self-publishing. Hmm. Can you share with us more about those two types? And uh, ano yung tingin mo yung mga pros and cons? And if you're a new writer, um, chances are, how do you get to traditional publishing? Sobrang hirap kasi. <laughs> and then, uh, would you recommend going into self-publishing first? So those kinds of insights will be helpful to our viewers. Okay. Since I did not take a traditional route towards writing and publishing, um, it, it helped kasi that my immediate community is Ateneo de Manila since I went there from prep to college. So that's why my first two books were about the Ateneo Blue Eagles. And, uh, the, you know, since they were very successful, there's a demand to read and create memorabilia related to Ateneo. So, hindi wala naman shortage ng alumni na magpa-fund ng, ng libro. So, dun nangyari yun. Because a lot of people are reading. And, to be honest with you, I don't really. When that blog was first put up, I didn't know if people were gonna read it. Naaway pa kami ng girlfriend ko nung. Parang sabi niya, sayang yung natutunan mo sa US. It would be a waste if you. But if you don't put up your blog, and I said, who's gonna read me? No one's gonna read my stuff. And then uh, they'll probably just end up criticizing me. So. Um, my dog is noisy. I don't even hear okay. my dog. May <laughs> uh, uh, so tine terrorize yung mga cats namin sa back. Playfully, <laughs> though. Playfully. Okay. Um, so it helped that there's that I found that immediate community, you know, which is my school, my alma mater, and then they had alumni willing to pay for it. So that certainly opened doors because now, uh, you had people from other schools and like uh, even from La Salle asking me, can you write about our team? I said, I'm not from La Salle. He said, so? And o nga naman, di ba? So then you have people uh, who I am not affiliated with, who I don't even know asking, can you write about this, write about that? And that's fascinating. I think the first thing is to write, just write. And here's something that I is next to my workstation that I'd like to share with you, Jamie. And I teach this to all my students. No? It's some, a sign that I've had with me for the last 24 years of my life. You'll never know what you're capable of until you take that first step and go for it. You, know? you have to just go out and do it. Just go out and write. Nagaawi kami over something as simple as an article about the Ateneo Blue Eagles. I'm wondering if people will read it. But nagsimula yan. No? May counter yan sa analytics. Eh. 10 people reading, 15 people reading. 25 people reading, diba? And then, before you know it, it's 300, 500, 1,000, 3,000, 5,000. Pumatak na ng half a million people reading, diba? And that's like, wow. You, I can't believe it. Before you know it, you start writing about other topics, other things, other genres, other aspects of life. You have letters coming in from Serbia, from England, diba? from China, Malaysia, Singapore, diba? not even Filipinos, foreigners. Diba? Like, I would get letters from a couple in, uh, people in England asking about shopping tips when it comes to Bangkok. And I'm not shy, but I would write about shopping, my adventures, and I would do videos to go along with it. And this was before vlogging became a, even a term. So I was doing that. And in fact, my first ever trip to Singapore in 2008, me and my girlfriend were like putting stuff on YouTube, diba? YouTube na kami. Oh, we ate here, we ate there, putting up blogs and stuff. 
And no, not many people are doing it at the time. And uh, the government of Singapore says, wow, they contacted us. Wow, you certainly had fun over here. Yes, we did. How about we pay you to write about Singapore for the official website of Singapore? Like, of course. I mean, who's going to turn that down, right? And then you get paid for it. So all these open stores, the, the important thing is to get, to put yourself out there. And you should not be afraid, diba? Right? Mm. Uh, Anytime you put yourself out there, you wonder if people will criticize you or say that your writing sucks or whatever. But, well, that's how you get better. Yeah. That's how you get better. I wasn't good overnight. I don't even want to say I'm an expert at it, yeah? no matter mm-hmm. how many books I've written. Certainly not. I, it's never gotten to my head. Never, ever, ever. And I'd like to keep it that way. Uh, so it's a constant learning process, even at my age. You know, you, there's, you, we were taught this in school. Eh? You're like a glass of water, or in this case, a mug of water. Um, <laughs> pag yan ng, let's say, coffee, juice, or tea, whatever, aapaw yan, di ba? So it, it means it's reached its level of competence. So you get, for, get a bigger mug, a bigger class. If you want to mm-hmm. equate it to a value meal, small, medium, large, di ba? Mm-hmm. Similar mm-hmm. small value meal, then you go for medium, then you go for larger. In some case, even biggie, diba? Our intellect, our capacity, it's like that. Mm-hmm. Once you've stopped accepting ideas and learnings, you've reached your level of competence. In my mm-hmm. industry, in my job as a marketing advertiser or media person, you cannot not learn. No matter what I've done, you can't say that you know everything that there is to know. You cannot. Because the world has changed. I think the internet, the digital, te- digital technology has changed the way we communicate. There's still much to learn. And it yes. has allowed me to thrive, Deva, and switch okay. careers so boldly when I left corporate, the corporate world, Deva, day job, mm-hmm. to go into writing full time. It has allowed me to thrive, adapt, and even be successful. So, yes, there's a Siguro kasi din, Jane, matapang din ako. Uh, <laughs> Arrange adver- talaga. <laughs> adver- advertising will do that to you. Di ba? So now you see everything, di ba? Like in, in, in school, we had to learn how to act. We would stage plays and write our own plays, score our own music, di ba? R- score our own plays. Di ba? So you're afraid. What will people think of the songs we're producing? The plays that we're producing? What will they think, di ba? And it is very hard. And uh, so, but then you have to perform it in front of the entire student body, whether you win a prize or not. But we were winning. And that, that certainly teaches you a lot by putting yourself out there. But you're all, you know, I'll tell you, I'm always nervous. Not jumpy, not openly jumpy, but I still get nervous. And I think it's good because it keeps me on my toes. Mm-hmm. Now, all these things you have to learn. You have to look at what you've learned and use everything as a stepping stone. There's a reason why you go through all of these things. You mm-hmm. have to understand that. If you don't see the connection, you will stay in that rut forever. So when you see the connection, why I did this, why I took this, why I took that, diba? I couldn't for the life of me understand why I my mom took me out of art school when I love drawing and painting. And she put me the next summer, taking up piano lessons. And then the next summer, guitar lessons. Diba? Then the next summer, drumming lessons. Diba? Then the next summer, nasa repertory kami, taking up acting classes. Diba? Mm. I'm not an actor. Yeah. But <laughs> when you think about it, every, there's, you learn from everything. If you write the line, a, the drunk man crossed the room. You have so many questions in your mind. How did he cross the room? Sumusuray ba siya? Sumusuka ba siya? Di ba? Did he wink at the pretty girl next to him? What did he do? There's so much information that you don't know. The drunk man crossed the room. So now you visualize that. Visualize it. The drunk man crossed the room. And then you write it. Visual writing. You, know, you describe it. Di ba? Only the pertinent details to the drunk man crossing the room. There is the tendency to overwrite and over-describe that doesn't really mean anything any anyway. That's mm-hmm. senseless and needless information. 
I think there's a certain discipline to that. But that's where the advertising comes to play. Right? Less is more. But you say it in descriptive and impactful words. So right? So when I put it all together, I leave, then even taking up seminars in the, the New York Times, right? you understand certain how to write like this, how to write like that. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's like the whole world opened up. And that's what I teach. I taught that in Ateneo when I was teaching in a college around 2010 to 2014. And then I was giving lectures in UP, UST, San Beda. Suki ako sa San Beda. Diba? <laughs> uh, Mindanao State University. Diba? Uh, schools in Pampanga, schools in Baguio. Diba? And I, I've been teaching online since June of 2020 at the height of the pandemic. And this coming January, uh, first week of January, I'll have my, a new class of students. Diba? Uh, I have a professional musician. I, I have someone who's into advertising. I have someone who's a teacher. I have a student. It's a mix of people. I have students from UP and San Beda. Mm -hmm. Hello. No? So, and I like it that way. That because you'll never, that doesn't mean just because you're not a professional writer, you cannot write. That's an absolute crap. That's a fallacy. I never thought of myself as a, as a writer. If someone asked you back then, oh, si Rick, advertising guy and marketing guy, diba? who became a journalist. Diba? Parang layo ng trap. That's why diba? the, the universe tells you something. Mm -hmm. you, every, every step that you take in your life leads to the next one. You just have to learn how to tie the knots and see where it's pushing you. Diba? Then uh, when I quit my corporate job, she said, Rick, there's no money in writing. I said, that's true. There's none. But, mom, if you're very, very good, there's money in writing. And I've been paid, <laughs> and I've been paid very, very well. Not just for my books, but even writing. It's, my writing has allowed me to travel the world and meet people I never mm -hmm. thought possible. Mm -hmm. Never, ever, ever thought possible. Diba? So, my writing has allowed me to circumnavigate this globe of mm. ours. And that's why I teach. I've gone back to teaching. Just when I thought I'm done teaching because of my crazy schedule, I'm teaching once more. And as, as I mm -hmm. said, since June 2020, although online, because my students are all over the Philippines and other countries, it's time to give it back. Whatever secrets, diba? Parang, ah, mm -hmm. mo, diba? There's a there parable of the talents in the Bible. It says, at the end of their days, the the Lord will ask you, what did you do with your talents? Mm -hmm. It's better to share it than if it can help people, then why not, di ba? Kaysa naman itago mo yan at walang nakinabang yung alam mo. Parang selfish. And I don't believe in that. And I can honestly say it's really helped my students even back when I was teaching in school, giving mm -hmm. lectures. To this day, many of the students I've had are my friends. And some of them have gone into film into writing, into TV, into mm -hmm. blogging, and people you wouldn't even expect. Some of them are professional athletes, right? mm -hmm. uh, Some of them are chefs, right? So, you know, writing, no matter what profession you have in this planet, it doesn't mean you cannot write. I've had two doctors, right? There's so many things you can, you can do. Mm -hmm. I know a doctor at Cardinal Santos who does a comic strip every single day. A comic strip Diba? And he's published them into books already. They're only shut off. You're only cut off by your imagination. You'll never know what you're capable of until you take that first step and go for it. It's so water-worn and all that. I've had this for the last 24 okay. years of my life. And it's always next to me, Jane. Yeah. It reminds, it reminds me. Constantly reminds me. It provides a very good guidance, eh? especially if you don't have the courage nga na, ay, baka walang magbasa eh. <laughs> so, well, thank you for that. Rick, kasi parang ang ganda ng progression nung sa'yo. Kasi you're into marketing, you're into advertising, and you you ultimately are developing a product. At the end of the, of the day, if you mastered advertising, marketing, then parang there's a higher chance of you being successful talaga in that field. So I'm go moving now to our next topic, which is authorpreneurship. 
So that one kasi, when when people embark on writing, sometimes madami pa din na yung mga introverts, uh, they just write, mm-hmm. I am just a writer, I don't want to market it, I'm shy, all those things. So do you have any tips how 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 the hell do we beat that? Um, kasi ang hirap eh. Um, sometimes you need to organize a marketing group to help you out on that. But if you're going self-publishing, medyo mahirap talaga the resources that are needed to be able to do that. Wala kang pagkukuhanan unless mayaman ka to begin with. But if not, um, there are so many challenges that a new writer really faces. And knowing marketing and advertising will definitely help. Okay. There, there are different ways to go about it, no, Jane. Uh, and to the people watching her podcast, no, and I suggest you you watch and digest everything from her from her various guests or even Jane herself, no, because uh, she's already published her own books. So. There are different ways to go about it. While it certainly helps to have a financial backer, but that 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 isn't always the case. And I always, uh, when I first met Jane, sa Toycon, I was I immediately went up to her no? and wrote about her for ABS-CBN News, which of her which I write. No? Because anyone who goes into self-publishing, I can certainly respect. Because it takes a lot of guts to do that. And, uh, you know, ang kagandaan sa self-publishing, uh, it's print on demand. You don't need a certain, like, diba? if you go to the big publishing houses, print ra namin minimum 1,000. Diba? Ang maganda sa self-publishing, kahit one copy, you can do it. You can. You certainly can. And ang dami na. Diba? My, all my comic books, my indie comics, sa UP ko lang pinapapublish yan sa old shopping center. Diba? And ang ganda na ng technology where it looks really great. Diba? Diba? It depends. Do you want to be in a bookstore? I don't want to be in a bookstore. Why do you want to be in a bookstore? Your book will be shunted off in a shelf next to X number of books. Maybe in the, upon its initial release, if you have a big name, yes, they'll give you a corner where people will see you. Seeing my books at fully booked, power books before, national bookstore, sarap ng feeling. Pero mas masarap ang feeling pag binabasa ng tao. Diba? Yun yung sinasabi. I tell this to all the writers, the novice writers. What if only five people read? Well, be glad there are five people reading. The worst is no one cares. That's the worst feeling. No one cares. <laughs> diba? Buti nga may five people. Diba? Then build it. Ano gusto mo? One million readers right away. Just naman. No? You will not have learned anything. You have to start somewhere. You earn your stripes. Diba? Like I said, diba? My blog. 10 people, 15 people, 25. Diba? Nag-aaway pa kami ng girlfriend ko. Babaw, diba? 35 people are babasad. <laughs> but it was growing exponentially. Diba? Uh, my most read one has 700,000 plus readers. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and it's gone, it's gone up. It's really gone up. That is a great equalizer's education. Yeah, education. And then you can even say sports because it has allowed the poor people to get scholarships. Diba? The third one is the internet. The cool thing about for today's generation is they've been given the tools to succeed. Diba? The internet. Diba? Make use of it. Diba? Some people, ayaw ka mag-Facebook on toxic. Well, it's only toxic if you want to be toxic. If you put in post-toxic stuff, well, expect toxic stuff. Diba? Uh, you know, it's a, it's a fallacy for many people thinking, this is my opinion, I'll state what I want. Well, excuse me. <laughs> You are not entitled to your opinion. You're not. That is a fallacy. <laughs> Even if it's your Facebook page. Kasi naka-public settings ka. Eh di huwag ka mag-public settings. Mag-private ka. Ikaw lang nakakabasa. Di ba? <laughs> the moment you put it out there, it's open to conjecture, good and bad. The same thing with creative work. The same thing with literary work. Di ba? I think it is a very, very important that, uh, that you know, you get feedback. Because that's how you learn. That's how you learn. That's how you get better. Sabi ko nga, di ba Jane, earlier? Pagdating ko na college, puros DF, 
C minus ang pinaka biggest best grade ko sa writing. Diba? That's enough to discourage you. Many of my classmates and I were in the honor section. We came away feeling we're not writers. <laughs> but what is the learning? What is the learning? You cannot be verbose. You cannot be unwieldy. So yun. Uh, you can sweat ako may financial buffer. Number two is you do it yourself. But when you do it yourself, you can just post some simple stuff lang on the internet. But what if it gets plagiarized? Well, ganito yan. The copyright law, uh, the intellectual property law states that, you know, if you can prove that you have ownership, kasi may timestamp din. Kahit email, in-email ko kay Jane, itong aking sinulat. And ang timestamp, for example, is January 2, 2023. Diba? And it's proven that may time, you cannot fake that. It's hard to fake. Very difficult to fake. Yeah. Uh, if I can prove, then let's say someone 10 years from now plagiarizes it. I can prove in an email to Jane that this is mine. Wala akin yun. Yun yung kagandaan sa copyright law. Diba? And uh, matatakot ka talaga mapaplagiarize kayo. Wala mangyayari sa'yo. Yeah. And besides, there are no new ideas anymore. They're just new spins and old yarns, as they say. And I don't like really using cliches. But that's how it is. Even if you publish an actual book, people can still steal some stuff from, from it. Diba? That, that shouldn't trouble people because it's always going to hinder you from doing it. And like I said, diba? start out with the internet. You can do self-publishing. You know, prior to the pandemic, sa Kubao, sa may Kubao X, there was always this day, this festival, where all these self-published authors would sell their stuff, whether they're magazines or books. It's wonderful. There's mm-hmm. this whole community. You go to 7-Eleven, dun sa gilid, there are all these self-published books. Isn't that amazing? They will not put that stuff there if no one buys. Meron eh. May market. Diba? We just don't know about it because there's just so much clutter out there. The internet has made everything noisier, diba? So you have to find your own, that's what I said, find your own community. That's where you start. That's where you build, diba? Start out with your family if they like it, diba? For example, I, I have, I'm writing something, Jane. Mm-hmm. Favorite naman, Jane. Can you read this, Jane? And if Jane likes this, hey, you have to read what Rick wrote. Yeah, that's how it goes. It spreads by word of mouth. I mean, that's, that's a, the ultimate truth because, you know, when it goes by word of mouth, that is very good. That's unassailable. It's a hard truth. Yan eh. diba? Yung mga fake stuff sa internet will only get you so far. But if people like it, diba? have you eaten at this restaurant? Diba? Word of mouth. Yan eh. O sige, pinapost sa internet. Yan. Pero, unbeatable ang word of mouth. Right. So that's where it starts. Starts out with something simple. Diba? Publish your own. Diba? That's how it all starts. No one becomes a superstar overnight. And, oh my God, I can't even believe I said that. Don't even think of becoming a superstar. Don't <laughs> read your own press. That's terrible. Diba? Just be grateful that people read you. That's all there is. Be grateful. Diba? If you do it for the money, well, get a job. Go to corporate, diba? If that's what you're... Diba, I hear that from... Diba, what will I make money? Well, if you want to make money, just get a job. <laughs> uh, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. If you want to become a writer, you write because you love it. I'll be honest with you. I get paid 500 pesos for some of the articles online that I write. Huh? Mm-hmm. But I get paid 25 grand for some... <laughs> it's one thousand dollars for some. But pinapatulan yung limandaan. Bakit? Are we mayabang na ba that hindi natin? No, you cannot be. It is an opportunity, right? To be read, de ba? Mahirap mm-hmm. yung may presyo, de ba? Mahirap yon, de ba? Sa panahon ng pandemya, mahirap na mayabang ka, may presyo. Start tayo dito sa ganito. Mahirap yon. You cannot be like that, de ba? Oh, I published nine books. So you have to pay me this much because money pang in. Well, no. One, one book that I've written, I've only been paid 70 grand. Huh? Bakit? I wanted to do it. I mm-hmm. wanted to do it. I didn't want it to go to another person. I wanted to do mm-hmm. it. If it gets, my mom tells me that we should not accept. No. I want to do it. 
not just for my resume, but because I want to do it. Right? You mm-hmm. write it because you love it. Diba? And here's another thing to your uh, viewers, no, Jane. You have to read. <laughs> you don't read, you will not learn style. You will not learn uh, plotting. Diba? Mm-hmm. That's very important. Diba? Uh, so, you know, marami t- maraming styles. You can do it on your own. It's become more prevalent. In fact, kahit sa recto, meron dyan self-publishing sa recto. Uh, mm-hmm. Malapit sa Morayta, sa FEU. Diba? There's okay. a store there that prints your own stuff. So, see, it's there. It's everywhere. So, uh, uh, since nasunog yung UP shopping, old UP shopping center, hindi ko alam. <laughs> La- alam ko, nalipat sa may tennis court. So. I've not been there since the pandemic started. Mm-hmm. But I'm certainly going back. Mm-hmm. <coughs> diba? Because mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to have some stuff pub- published and printed. To, go to sum it up, just uh, build on the community that you have. Diba? Mm-hmm. You start with your friends, go with your barcada, your writer's group, your circle. Start from there. And then, like I said, diba? my immediate community was at Ateneo. Then before I knew it, La Salle comes calling. Can mm-hmm. you write about our athletes? And you know, ako sa lista. Eh. Kung Mayabang tayo, bahala kayo sa buhay nyo. Hindi pwede ganoon. <laughs> right. Hindi pwede You have to... It is an opportunity. Mm-hmm. It's an opportunity. And then you make friends from from outside your group. That's how it grows. Diba? That's how it grows. Remember, the work that you put out there, if you want to be toxic, then expect toxic returns. And even if you don't intend to be toxic and may toxic na nag-reply, Take mm-hmm. it in. Suck it up. That's how mm-hmm. you get better. Hindi ka pwedeng balat si Boyas. Ayan, sakit, di ba? <laughs> Ganito lang yan eh. Sa criticism, di ba? Mm-hmm. If sinabi niya, alam mo Rick, Jane, pangit yung sinulat mo kasi ganito eh. Dapat siguro ganito yung ganyan, ganyan, ganyan. Nag-explain siya kung bakit. May problema yung writing mo. Pero kung sinabi niya, di, bulok ka, pangit, baduy. Chances are they didn't even read it. But even so, take it. Ano gusto natin? Puro puri. <laughs> hirap yun. Hirap yun, hirap yun. I think that advertising prepared me for that. Because you have to eat a lot of crap. A lot of it. From clients. Diba? Who will call you every unprintable word in the, in the, pla- uh, in the dictionary or whatever. In urban slang. Diba? Kasi pangit daw yung ginawa mo. You have to take it. Diba? Then do get, just get better. Ganun talaga. Hindi ka pwedeng balat si Boyas. Any, look, any creative work, anything that you put out, diba? do, do you think George Lucas worried about putting Star Wars out there? Mm. Or Amer- American Graffiti? Diba? You can't worry about what people will say. You cannot. If you worry about that, you'll never get anything done. And at the end of the day, mo ashin chapsui. Because you're trying to please people. Do it because it's yeah. something that pleases you. Mm-hmm. Those are really excellent tips, Rick. Thank you for those. But I'd like to pick your brain some more. Uh, and this is about writer's block. Uh, <laughs> okay. Kasi yan yung kinatatakutan ng <laughs> lahat ng writers. Minsan nasa start ka pa lang, tapos hindi mo na alam talaga ano pa bang isusulat mo. So, what, um, ano yung insights mo that you can share with our okay. viewers about it and how to battle them? Okay. It's very simple to be honest. But have I encountered it? Of course. That was when I did not understand how to go about it. Very, it's, it's actually very simple, how to beat writer's block. If you're writing a book, ganito lang kasimple yan. Ano bang gusto mo? In anything, whether it's an article, a short story, a book, what do you want to say? Ask yourself, what do you want to say? Diba? So if you know what you want to say, it should be easy. Because you know what you want to say. If you don't know what to say, then you're in trouble. Diba? For those who are into advertising, diba? ang tinuturo nila sa brainstorming. Diba? Parang, sige lang, kung anong nas pumasok sa isip mo. Diba? Kahit malabo, kahit weird. Then at the end of your brainstorming, are we on strat? Are we on strat? Is this what we want to present? So whatever answers that question, you strike it out. No ma- Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote in, in Sherlock Holmes, whatever is left, no matter how improbable and impossible, is the truth. 
So when you're done sifting through all of that, no matter how weird, that's it. What do you want to say? Diba? So you do, like what I do in a book proposal, I write down my chapters. Nis ko na, ano ba gusto kong sabihin tungkol dito? Diba? Break it down. Yun yung chapters mo. They teach that in basic writing in high school, your outline. What do you want to say? Diba? People, uh, undisciplined writers will not adhere to that. There's nothing wrong with that. Diba? It's a, so for many people, it's a feel thing. I get you, but that's tough. Diba? Books have structure, writing is structure. There should always be a semblance of structure. Kung sa sabihin la sa bugga, addict ka. Diba? So, I think, answer the question, what do you want to say? Then, now that you know what you want to say, break it down. Break it down to chapters if it's a book. Now, how, but, but okay, how do I write this? Okay, ganito yan. There's something that they was taught to me that I teach to my students. It's called the imperfect right. The imperfect right is just write the darn thing. No matter if there are wrong tenses, it does not make sense. You jump from here to there, that is okay. Just write, you know, in what you know, those creative moments, they come and go. Just sit down and write. No matter where it takes you and leads you. Even if it doesn't make sense, even if you jump from one thing to another, just write. The moment when you are done, stop. Wala na, napiga mo na yung utak mo. Tapos na, nawala yung adrenaline rush or that creative inspiration. Then you stop, leave it. Leave it. Tulugan mo. Balikan mo bukas. Makikita mo what makes sense, what does not make sense, what can you, oh, you move this up here, you move that up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, this works in so many, across so many genres. For those who are into music, if you've seen the film Rattle and Hum by U2, the song Angel of Harlem, the song Angel of Harlem that appears in the film Rattle, of hum, Rattle and Hum, may kita mo iba yung verse dun sa lumabas, dun sa actual plaka, sa album. Mm. Bakit? Kasi you move things here and there. That's, the, that's about flow. Writing is about flow. Music is about flow. Life is about flow. The sooner you understand all these concepts, the better it is. Diba? It's all about flow. Diba? Mm -hmm. Math and science is about flow and logic. Writing is about flow and logic. Diba? It's about flow and logic. Diba? That's why it makes sense. So when people understand, so when you do the imperfect right, so that kalang, you will see if it flows or it does not flow. You will see if you need to bump up these paragraphs up there, if you need to knock down some paragraphs here, you will see that maybe this does not work. Maybe we don't need to do this. That's what you call the imperfect right. That's the answer to writer's block. If it's not doing a, an outline or answering simply what you want to say, then do the imperfect right. But there's another technique, but I can only teach that. It's hard. I'm not saying na invento ko yun. It's something that I learned over time. It's a, it's a sum, the sum of all my experiences. Mm -hmm. Here, there, and everywhere. Diba? Like, now you understand. Because I've been through writer's block multiple times because I did not understand flow and logic. I did not. You need to ko earlier, Jane, diba? you don't understand everything. I think because... You need the experience. You need the maturity to get a lot of things. So for the younger set out there, try the imperfect right. Just write the darn thing. No matter mm -hmm. if it does not make sense. When you're done, look at it. Fix it. Move, shift things around. Diba? And then it should be easy. Then when you're writing books, no one writes in linear fashion. No one. Maybe... Maybe some of you do. I wouldn't know. But no movie is shot in linear fashion from beginning to end. No! They shoot it at different intervals. Sometimes they'll do the ending first. Diba? For many, many reasons. Either budget, location, time, etc. Et but somewhere along the way, there are numerous rewrites to scripts. Whether it's film or television, the same thing happens in books. The mm -hmm. same thing happens in articles. You go through rewrites. Diba? And it's a part, it's part and parcel of life. It's part and parcel of your career. It's part and parcel of writing. You have to learn that. Diba? So, no, you can start with your ending. If you notice today, there's, there aren't many linear storytelling uh, done today. 
sometimes you watch a film, it starts out with the ending or the climax or right before the climax, di ba? And then it goes back. Ganun. Ganun ang book writing, di ba? It doesn't start from cradle to the grave. Hindi na ganun. Once upon a time, it was that way. Not anymore. There are all these different techniques. That's in the imperfect, right? Sometimes you start with the end. Sometimes, mm-hmm. di ba? You jump here and there. You sometimes you start in the middle. Di ba? Kung if you, ganito, if you struggle with something, that means there's something fundamentally wrong with it. There's something fundamentally wrong with what you're writing. There's something, walang flow in logic. Kasi kung may flow in logic, mag, mabilis lang yan eh. <laughs> Moments of inspiration, you're done writing a song in five minutes and ten minutes. You're done writing an article in 30 minutes. That's when you know it's perfect because it just pours. But when you struggle, there's something fundamentally wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Wag mo nang pagpilitan. Balikan mo yung ano ba gusto ko sabihin? Ano ba? Di ba? Some people kasi, oh, I want to write a clever first line. Ay. Yes, that helps. That definitely helps. But that's not the answer to everything. Di ba? Galing, ganda nga ng first line mo, second sentence mo, doesn't mean crap. Di ba? It's flow and logic. Di ba? Flow and logic. Um, but, you know, again, I understood a lot of this only around 2006. 16 years after I graduated from college. Mm-hmm. 16 years. And I wasn't even a professional writer yet. Mm-hmm. You understand why people are liking this, liking that. Then, then you look at, you learn. You have to look at the connections. Diba? Yeah, the answers to all, a lot of things are out there. <laughs> we just have to learn how to dis- dis- discern everything. To read it properly. Diba? So even book writing, article writing, it's just there. You just have to figure it out. You know? What do you want to say? That, so in my opinion to your viewers, mm-hmm. do they right? Just write, 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 write. Even if it's nonsense. Even if you shift off to Chabacano. Di ba? Mm-hmm. Magbisaya ka. Sulat mo. Sulat mo. Di ba? Yun yung nararamdaman mo at that moment. Eh. Sulat mo. Di ba? No matter how coarse, even if it is ungrammatically correct, sulat mo in phrases, run-on sentences, fragments, bits and pieces. Just write the damn thing. Then you pick up the pieces and see what makes sense and what does not make sense. And then you shift things around. And then you'll see like, oh my God, it's easy. Pala. But you have to keep at it. You will struggle the first time you do your imperfect right. Yeah, parang hirap. That means you are not giving in. You are not. You just have to give it. Mm-hmm. You, know, you have to surrender yourself to the process. I learned it in the U.S. from I attended the seminars in New York Times, you know, and uh, I learned it there. But I kind of refined it to when I think about the process because of brainstorming, advertising. Yeah, you know, di ba? Parang I rem- there, there, I remember the rules we had in brainstorming and advertising. Yeah, no matter how crazy, no, no matter how weird. Sige lang, silat mo lang. Diba? Wala munang barila ng konsepto. Diba? Wala. Pagtapos na, pasok ba sa strategy? Ano ba yung, ano yung creative brief? Ano yung marketing brief? Are we on strat? As they say. That is the advertising term. Are we on strat? If it's on strat, no matter how weird it is, keep it. Like, I remember one time, you were doing the, uh, I just joined this ad agency, Avellian and Associates, and we had the Yellow Pages back when their Yellow Pages was a big thing. So obviously, wala pang internet. They wanted to do something new. And, uh, and I, I sat down and I said, what am I going to do with this? And uh, I flipped through the Yellow Pages. For those who are familiar with the Yellow Pages, it's a directory of everyone living in Metro Manila. Everyone. Nandun yung landline, etc. Nandun yung mga products and services from pet grooming to uh, tubero, whatever. Lahat nandun. Wala na siya ngayon kasi hindi ko alam bakit. But anyway, so I spent a whole day going through the directory the previous year. No? And I began to notice a pattern like, oh, there's a lot of weird stuff here. Yeah, a, a listing for magicians, a listing for tarot card readers, a, list, a, li- a, a listing for clowns, a listing for earthworm removers, all sorts of even weird stuff. Yeah. And at the time, 
the hot new television show was The X-Files. And what mm. is the tagline of The X-Files? The truth is out there. And I realized like everything is in here. Everything. So my commercial for the yellow page, the PLDT yellow pages was like The X-Files. Dark, right? We had clowns and magicians. We had mermaids. Imagine mermaids for rent. Duh! <laughs> <laughs> and it won several awards. It did. So well, you know, well, you, you you have to. That that's part of the creative process, diba? Ano mang, How can you tell? Diba? Kasi yellow pages. It's so boring, diba? What can you tell that's interesting about a listing for ad numbers and services, diba? So you look at it, diba? And I felt that was tremendous, tremendous learnings from advertising. So. Diba, nagbe-brainstorm. Ano bang pwedeng sabihin? Diba? And then, sige, sulat. Lahat ng weird weird products and services. Linist ako. Pero in a 30, 45, one-minute commercial, you cannot show everything. So you do by process and elimination. Ano bang pinaka-interesting or na adaptable into the X-Files type of commercial? Diba? So yun yung imperfect, right? Diba? So, uh, it's a process. The imperfect right, although I learned it, I imbued it with a lot of what I learned from advertising. A lot of it. Diba? Uh, like the brainstorming. Walang barila na konsepto. Diba? Uh, yung part na yun, linagay ko sa imperfect right. Walang barila na konsepto. And at the end of the day, ano bang, are we on strap? So babalikan ko yung, ano bang gusto kong sabihin? Diba? So I teach that now in my writing classes. No? Uh, so I hope that people watching this, you look up and join my class. I promise you'll enjoy it. It's it's cheap. It's not about the price. It's what I teach. No? Uh, and uh, a lot of it's really helped a lot of my students. And some of them have gone into writing, even if they're in other professions. I don't expect you to leave your fair doctor. I don't expect you to quit being a doctor. But you can certainly make use of your writing to te- write medical books or whatever. Right? Sabi ko nga siyo, si Doc Carlos San Juan, who's at the Cardinal Santos, does comic book strips for a newspaper. And he's published all of them into books. It's called Kalos. C-A-W... Kalos. Kalos. Diba? I Let's have see. that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Two books. Oh, there you go. I see? bought it at Comic Hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was so inspired when I saw it. Plus, I have a doctor friend who also wants to do comic strips. So when I saw it, I bought two books and then I asked him to put a dedication and I gave the other one to my oh, friend. So he'll be inspired. <laughs> so go. maybe, Rick, um, can you share nga, uh, where can we find yung mga advertisements mo about your upcoming uh, workshops? Um, well, it, you'll, you'll see it on my social media, my Facebook, my Twitter. I don't put it on my IG. My IG is reserved for food my records, my books. I don't post stuff like that. Once in a while, I'll do, but I reserve it for the mga hobbies ko. Uh, I know that my students share it online. And uh, I've met, I've made so many friends because of it. Some of them have been with me for two years. These are different courses. Eh? They, some of them take it again because they understand it better later on. Diba? Some of them have been with me for like two years. And like I have the student from La Vaisia. She wasn't she's a, she was only a freshman in college at the time of the first year of the lockdown. And she saling pusa lang she. Her brother was the one who joined, and her mom said, Sali ka na. And she was half-hearted about it. She was so anti-social, anti-social media. She took the class and wasn't learning to, until the last several sessions. And then she got it. You have to surrender yourself to the process. If you don't surrender yourself, if you forever resist what I'm teaching you, then you will not get it. She repeated the class. And since then, she's been editor-in-chief of a magazine. <laughs> a published magazine. She's written, artic- she's written articles mm-hmm. where she's been paid. At After one article, may nag-offer sa kanya ng trabaho. Right away. Wow. After only one. Oh, oh. After only one. And now they're sending her to Korea to interview a K-pop star. Wow, that's so, the diba? Like I K-pop. said, like like I said, diba? 
you'll never know what you're capable of. And then, you know, she was so anti-social media, you know. Mm-hmm. Toxic in social media. Again, it's only toxic if you want to be toxic. But if you put your best foot forward, there will be mostly good stuff. It's not an echo chamber. But look, if people don't like your work, they won't care. It's that simple. But if they like your work, they will read it and then they will share it. They will tell, diba? And my my Facebook settings are in public. But isn't that the risk? Well, sure it is, but why am I going to st- put it on private and other people will not see my work? That's how everything is opened up for me. Diba? If I was just so locked into my community, Ateneo, then yun lang. Diba? But the community out there is much bigger than Ateneo. And I'm thankful for that community because I've gotten out there. I've joined the comic book community, diba? And more. Diba? And uh, it's amazing. Diba? So, uh, the, siguro, if you just hook, uh, message me on FB. I post every now and then uh, about it. Uh, I was supposed to have taught my last class in November of last year. Yun na yung last ko. Ayoko na, parang na pagut na pagut eh. Cause I was teaching 16 classes classes a week. 16. Di ba? My afternoons to evenings were all classes. So dami na sa jante ko. Di ba? And I, I was teaching in a college in Pampanga online though. So nadagdagan pa yon. And I was I had a class full of teachers. Teachers, yes, puro teachers like classic. A teacher teaching teachers. Isn't that weird? Yeah, so I was, I was so burned out. I was tired. And I said, that, and that's on top of my, my workload. Yeah, my heavy, heavy workload. But then, uh, just when I said, okay, I'm done. May inquiry sa naman. Diba? So now, and how can you say no? How can you say no to people who want to learn? Diba? So I, so I said, okay, I'll do it. It's, it's, it's cheap. It's not about the price. It's about what you teach and you hope that they, in, they imbibe it, they learn from it. Diba? And now I get my teachers in school. Why do they get mad when people don't do the work? I get it. Because you're passing on a piece of you, a part of you. And then when they don't take it seriously, you get upset about it. I don't yell at them. But it upsets me. You know, mm-hmm. say, but for the most part, I've been very successful with the 210 plus students I've had. Not mm-hmm. counting the ones I taught in the college in Pampanga. 200 yun. Yun palang 200. Din. So I was teaching 400 people during the lockdown. Mm. And dami. Uh, oh, dami, ba? I was teaching four classes in one day. Can you imagine? And each class is a minimum of an hour and 30 minutes. Maximum of two, sometimes two hours and 30. Yeah, because they enjoy it. Eh? They, you know. Yeah. And it's multiple time zones. Diba? Kasi hindi lang Pinoy, international. Pa. So, ayan, no? uh, when I think about it, those piano lessons, those acting lessons, those drawing lessons, those speed mm-hmm. reading and comprehension classes that I took in Makati, they... <laughs> They contributed to who I am and what I am today. Whatever I've done, and I look back at it and I, I, I tell my mom, you know, thanks, mom. I really want to thank you. I'm very grateful because you spent more than an hour with us. And I think at the yung... One hour, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time flies, right? Uh, I hope I didn't bore your viewers. I hope I didn't bore you guys. <laughs> a lot of insights in this interview, but siguro, can you give a top three tips for our viewers para lang mas ma-engage sila into writing and to really go for it? Okay, number one, read. You have to read. Sana you're well-read. It's, there's so much to learn from others. Diba? You have to broaden your horizons. Uh, number two, you have to learn from life because that's the best way to write. From you observe what's going on in your life. Yeah, that's. Jan ka na ko kuan ng topics kasi yung mag isip ka pa, mag invent ka pa. Diba? I'll, I'll tell you a very quick anecdote based on that. No? On, a, on a trip to Scotland, I went to that, re- that coffee shop where J.K. Rowling would sit and write Harry mm-hmm. Potter. And uh, I, I specifically asked the table where she would sit. Most of the time. Because, of course, sometimes she's still there. So from her window, from the window, 
at the Elephant House. It burned down last year, the pandemic. I don't know if they've built it up again. From the window, you can see Edinburgh Castle, which formed part of the inspiration for Hogwarts. From that window, you could see a medieval cemetery. And in that medieval cemetery, there's a Voldemort, Tom Riddle. May tombstone at Tom Riddle. He's an actual person. Diba? So from that window, you, yeah, she had a view of the beauty and magnificence of Edinburgh. Diba? And uh, so diba? you will only understand that when you observe life. So numerous times you'd sit there, sip, drink coffee, and suffer writer's block and just look out. And, oh, what is Edinburgh? Edinburgh is magical. You feel it. Diba? Uh, you will see many places that will remind you of Diagon Alley. It's walking around. Diba? So th there are stories to tell around you. So learn from life. It's just there. There's so many stories to tell. The best songwriters, the best authors, they tell about what's going on in their lives or someone they know. Because it's easier to write from that, from there. Diba? Sylvester Stallone wrote Rocky after watching, I forget the guy's name, Chuck something. Diba? It's there. Diba? Just baliin mo na lang. Diba? So that's tip number two. Tip number three would be to take that first step. Always take that first step. Don't be afraid. Diba? Uh, courage is found in the unlikeliest of places. Diba? And um, like I said earlier, whether it's one person, two people, five persons reading it, at least you have. And build on that. Diba? Those should not be discouraged. The worst is there's no one. Yeah. Then you build from there. No one becomes a sensation overnight. And I wouldn't encourage you to be one. Because it will make you compromise your principles. Diba? Why you did this in the first place. At the core of it, writing is a love for reading. It's a love for learning, and it's a love for writing, per se. You get into writing because you love it. You love it. And then when you love it, you give back to it. It will reward you. Mm -hmm. Just don't ask for it. Mm -hmm. right? It will reward you when you least expect it. Because like, giving back to it, right? I would pour my heart out into writing. Before I knew it, people were reading. People were offering opportunities left and right. I do hope that you give it like, my class a try because, um, you know, they're, essentially I teach you all my secrets and I don't want to be selfish about these things. Okay. Thank you for that, Rick. So, by the way, we can find you on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, as well, right? There and then. Okay. <laughs> on all the social media platforms. Google so, na lang ako, Google. Yeah, oh nga. Actually, uh, there's still a lot to learn about Rick. Thank you so much, Rick. It's so fun to have Most you welcome. here. And Thank you and happy new year again. Happy new year. <laughs>